Hey there, let's chat about the 1968 film, The High Kamalan Traditioner. Have you ever thought about when you first saw this movie? Or maybe you have a favorite character from it. Stick around for some interesting facts about this movie. It's a mix of funny, surprising, and sad moments. Now, let's discuss The High Kamalan Traditioner without getting too fancy. This movie is a classic from 1968 with a story full of interesting characters that keep you hooked. No need for fancy talk here, just a simple journey through a piece of cinema history. As you think back on this film, share your favorite memory or experience related to it. What made this movie special for you? We'd love to hear your stories in the Kamalan Trents below. And before you leave, remember there's a lot more to learn about the high Kamalan Trishner. So, which character stood out to you the most? Let us know. Your thoughts might bring back memories for someone else. Stay tuned for more movie discussions. We're excited to hear your stories. In 1968, a movie called The High Kamalan Traditioner was released, capturing audiences with its thrilling story and impressive acting. Imagine going back to the late 60s, a time of intense politics and changing cultures. It's during this period that our story unfolds, giving a peek into the tensions and mysteries of the time. This movie isn't like any other, it's a part of movie history. It's a story that not only entertains, but also reflects the social and political climate of its time. Set against the backdrop of Cold War spying, the movie follows a seasoned diplomat navigating through a world of international mystery and secret plans. What makes this movie special is its ability to draw viewers into a world of spying and excitement. As the main character dives deeper into the mystery, audiences are kept on the edge of their seats, eager to uncover the truth with him. The movie's importance lies in its portrayal of power struggles and the complications of diplomacy during a time of global uncertainty. As the credits roll, one can't help but admire the skill that went into making such an engaging piece of cinema. From the gripping story to the outstanding performances, the high Kamalan traditioner leaves a lasting impression on anyone who watches it, reminding us of the power of storytelling to transcend time and connect with people across generations. In conclusion, this movie isn't just a movie, it's a glimpse into a past era, a reminder of the timeless appeal of classic cinema. Its influence continues to be felt today, reminding us of the lasting allure of a well-told story. So, if you're in the mood for a thrilling journey through the world of spying, look no further than The High Kamalan Traditioner. The High Kamalan Traditioner starred in two films selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress, The Sound of Music, and Malcolm X. He was considered for roles with John Wayne in Rio Bravo, Circus World, and The War Wagon before finally working together in The Train Robbers. This film is known by two titles, Nobody Runs Forever and The High Kamalan Traditioner. It was released under both titles in different territories, debuting as Nobody Runs Forever in England in September 1968, and later riddled The High Kamalan Traditioner for its S release in December 1968. The High Kamalan Traditioner attended the Hill School in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and later pursued studies at Cornell University, graduating with Phi Beta Kappa honors in 1927. He also studied at Rams University in France. In his early career, he appeared in Machina Inferno by Gene Cocteau, alongside another young Montreal actor, William Shatner. They would later reunite in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. Among the films he starred in, his personal favorite was The Lives of a Bengal Lancer. The High Kamalan Traditioner is a 1968 espionage movie starring Australian Rod Taylor. Taylor had previously starred in The Liquidator, the first major spy film of the 1960s to feature an Australian as its lead secret agent. Interestingly, this predated George Lazenby's role in On Her Majesty's Secret Service by about four years. Rod Taylor's longest gap between Academy Award nominations was six years, spanning from beginners in 2010 to all the money in the world in 2017. The movie features a notable actress who, at her 10th birthday party, met Kirk Douglas. Douglas, who was filming The Juggler in her town in Israel, arranged for her to study ballet. A decade later, they worked together in Vincent Minnelli's Two Weeks in Another Town, where she received a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer for her work. The High Kamalam Drishner presents a compelling narrative against the backdrop of espionage, featuring Rod Taylor in a prominent role alongside other talented actors. The High Kamalam Traditioner, released in 1968, is a film featuring one child of the actress and her husband, Peter Rittmaster, named Alexander. The couple divorced in 1975. On May 22, 22, he was honored with the first Jason Robards Award for Excellence in Theater by the Roundabout Theater. 
His co-star from The Sound of Music, Dane Julie Andrews, attended the event. He is also related to Theobald Wolfe Tone, a renowned Irish patriot. These personal details shed light on the actor's life beyond his role in The High Kamal Antarishner. In 1968, the movie The High Kamal Antarishner was released, starring Australian actor Rod Taylor as the character Scobie Malone. Later, in 1975, another movie called Scobie Malone featured Jack Thompson in the same role. Taylor stepped in last minute to replace George Sanders in the 1967 musical Sherry, which was based on the man who came to dinner but didn't do well. He also played King Herod in two adaptations, one in the 1977 film Jesus of Nazareth and another in the animated comedy The Star in 2017. In the late 60s, there's a film starring Rod Taylor, an Australian actor. In it, he plays an Australian character, which was a change after five years. The last time he did that was in a movie called The VIPS back in 1963. What's interesting is that one of the companies involved in making this film was Taylor's own company, Rodler Inc. The movie also features another actor, Tone. He had a significant moment in 1940 when he was cleared of connections to a certain political group during a hearing at a hotel in New York. However, in 1949, he was listed among a group associated with another political affiliation in a publication by someone named Myron C. Fagan. Moreover, Tone appeared in three films alongside Elizabeth Taylor before this one giant, Raintree County, and the VIPS. This movie offers a mix of Australian talent and Hollywood intrigue, making it noteworthy in both Rod Taylor's career and the broader context of 60s cinema. The High Kamala Antarishner is a 1968 movie that marked the final appearance of Franchot Tone, who passed away just a week after its release in the U.S. during a street scene where Rod Taylor is assaulted by three men. The poster of Deadlier Than the Male, directed by Ralph Thomas, is visible in the background. Throughout his career, Rod Taylor appeared in seven films alongside Rick Young, The Sinister Man, The Terror of the Tongs, Satan Never Sleeps, The Brides of Fu Manchu, You Only Live Twice, The Chairman, and Kiss of the Dragon. The High Kamalan Tarishner offers a glimpse into the collaboration between Taylor and Young within the context of their respective filmographies. In the 1968 film, The High Kamalan Tarishner, both the father and his daughter, Amanda Plumalimeter, who also acted in Jean Anuil's play The Lark, appeared. He had a role on Broadway in 1955 while she performed at Stratford in 2005. Swedish actress Camilla Sparv starred in three spy movies in a row. Murderer's Row in 1966 was the first, followed by Assignment K in 1968. The main character of the High Kamala Antarishner, who was honored on a Canadian postage stamp in 2021, actively participated in the stamp's creation by approving its design. The stamp, available in booklets of 10 and panes of 6, was priced at 95 cents upon release.